Backfire G3 Plus is so expensive. <gasps> if only there were a cheaper version with a bamboo deck because no one cares about Carbon Furby. This is the Backfire G3, not the G3 Plus, the G3. I'm gonna be reviewing this board in this video, so keep on watching. But first, I'm gonna talk about the differences between the G3 Plus and the G3. And then I'm gonna talk about the turbo feature because that's something that has been majorly improved over the previous generation Backfire Galaxy boards. So here are the differences between the Backfire G3 and the G3 Plus. The G3 Plus uses a carbon fiber deck and the G3 uses a bamboo and fiberglass composite deck. The carbon fiber deck on the G3 Plus has about the same stiffness as the G2T, which is the previous generation board. The bamboo deck on the G3 is much more flexible and better at absorbing bumps on the road. The G3 Plus comes with 85 millimeter wheels installed, and it also comes with a full set of 96 millimeter wheels. The G3 only comes with 96 millimeter wheels. The battery on the G3 Plus has a maximum continuous discharge rate of 70 amps. On the G3, it's 60 amps. The motors on the G3 Plus are 600 watts each. The motors on the G3 are 450 watts each. Those are all of the differences between the G3 and the G3 Plus, as far as I know. If I missed anything, Backfire will probably leave a comment, so be sure to check the comment section. Now let's talk about Turbo. Turbo has been majorly improved, and to explain how it has been improved, let me first briefly talk about the problems that I had with Turbo in the past. So I mostly had two issues with Turbo in the past. One was the 30 second cooldown period. I didn't really have a problem with the 30 second limit where Turbo shuts off after 30 seconds. My problem was the cooldown period, because even if you use Turbo for let's say five seconds, you still have to wait 30 seconds before you can use Turbo again. And it was just kind of annoying because because there wasn't a really good indicator for when that 30 second cooldown period was going to be over. So you always had to kind of just guess and wait. My other issue with Turbo was that Turbo didn't really feel deserving of the name Turbo because with a name like Turbo and with a button that's literally a danger sign, you would expect engaging Turbo to be like pressing the NOS button. To me, it just totally didn't feel like that. Turbo, to me, just felt slightly stronger than the sport mode. But all of that has changed now. Turbo no longer has any kind of time limit. There's no 30 second limit to how long you can use it, and there's no 30 second cooldown period. Once you turn on Turbo, it just stays on for as long as you want. Turbo also feels much stronger now. Turbo now feels like Turbo. Does that mean Turbo is perfect now? Well. I can still nitpick, but I'm going to talk more about that when I talk about the remote. Now I'm going to talk about all the stuff that I normally talk about in my reviews, starting with the deck. As I said earlier, the G3 uses a bamboo and fiberglass composite deck. This is a flexi deck. You know how in the past with the Backfire G2 and G2S, Backfire advertised their board as having a flexi deck? The quality trucks, the flexi deck. Flexi deck. I mean, technically it was flexi, but you wouldn't really ride the board like it was a flexi deck. It was, for the most part, a stiff deck. But with the G3, this really is a flexi deck now, which means if you like flexi decks, like for example, the loaded Vanguard, then you'll probably like this deck. It is quite flexi and you can bounce around on it. If you feel like the type of carving where you're bouncing from one side to the other, you might like this deck. This deck is also a little bit longer and a little bit wider than the previous generation deck, which for me is good news because I like having the deck a little bit longer. I have two regular longboards that are about 40 inches long, and that's the length that I personally prefer in most cases. A slightly longer deck is just more comfortable to ride on. The deck also has noticeably more concave than before, which is great. You can totally feel exactly where your feet are on the board. The wheels that come with this board are 96 millimeters. Not sure about the durometer. Riding on this board feels like riding a belt drive board. I'll talk more about that when I get to the drive system, but I'm pretty happy with these wheels. The previous generation Backfire Galaxy boards used the Caliber 2 in the front, but only in the front. Now, both the front and back use Caliber trucks. I really like Caliber trucks. The way they turn just feels really linear, really predictable. Caliber trucks are among the most popular trucks in the world. 
the Backfire G3 uses a Hobbywing ESC designed for 12S batteries. So I'll give you my usual spiel about Hobbywing ESCs. The control that you get with Hobbywing's ESC is really good. Acceleration is really accurate and intuitive. Braking is also really accurate and intuitive. It's like using the gas pedal and brake pedal in a car. You don't get this kind of control with every ESC. Okay, now let's talk about the remote. So as you can see here, this remote now has a slightly different color scheme from the previous remote. Just like the previous remote, this remote has a display. It has a battery indicator for the board and also the remote. It has a speedometer and odometer telling you how far you've gone on this trip and also how far you've gone ever since you got the board. Although I'm not sure why this says six kilometers when I've gone more than 30. So I don't know. Might be because I changed the battery recently. Here is a forward and reverse switch. This remote uses a USB-C cable to recharge. This button is the power button. It also turns on the light on the side of the board. And if you wanna turn off the light, you also just press this twice. This button lets you switch between eco mode and sport mode. And of course, here's the turbo button. So when you hit the turbo button, you get a seizure. Unfortunately, you can't turn off this light when turbo is on. See, when turbo is on, if I try to turn it off, it doesn't turn off. And another annoyance is that I can't turn off turbo using the turbo button. This button is only for turning on turbo. See, it doesn't turn it off. To turn off turbo, you need to press the speed mode button. Now it's off. So now that there's no time limit on turbo, what's the point of having a turbo button? I mean, isn't turbo basically a third speed mode now? But I don't really have a big problem with it actually, because I think most of the time I'm gonna use sport mode because the torque on turbo is really quite strong. If you're a heavier person, you might wanna use turbo all the time. But for me at around 70 kilograms, sport mode is more comfortable for me. I might use turbo for situations like where I'm going up a hill or I need to pass someone. Speaking of which, let me tell you my main complaint about turbo now. You can't engage turbo while you're on the throttle. You have to let go of the throttle to engage turbo. This kind of design is obviously for safety reasons. Why do I have a problem with it? Because I think the best use case for using turbo is when you're going up a hill. So what I would like to do when going up a hill is to stay on the throttle and use my other hand to engage turbo. But it doesn't let you do that. You have to let go of the throttle. And what happens when you let go of the throttle while you're going up a hill is that you slow down a lot. Depending on the incline, you can slow down to almost a complete stop by the time you hit the turbo button and get back on the throttle. So my feelings about turbo is that the implementation is still kind of quirky, kind of weird, but it's much better than before. And turbo now is actually useful. I quite like the design of this remote actually. This hole in the front comes in handy, so you can do this. If you're wearing really thick gloves and your glove doesn't fit in the hole, you can put your finger up here instead in this notch over here. As you can see, this board uses hub motors. Now, if you've seen my other videos, you know that I generally prefer belt drive because with belt drive, you get to use four actual wheels. With full urethane wheels, the ride comfort is generally much better than hub motors. With hub motors, because the urethane sleeve is usually very thin, riding over any kind of bumpy surface tends to be really uncomfortable. But this board is a little bit different because the hub motor sleeves are thicker than most. Just for comparison, here's an 83 millimeter sleeve for an X-Way. As you can see, the 96 millimeter sleeve on the Backfire has about double the amount of thickness in urethane. So the ride actually feels quite like normal longboard wheels. It's actually a combination of things. The sleeves are thicker, the deck is flexy, quarter inch shock pads, the diameter of the wheel being 96 millimeters. So all of those things combined makes this ride quite comfortable actually. You don't get the kind of harsh vibrations that you get from a typical hub motor board. There is a downside though, the downside is that you can only use wheels that Backfire provides and maybe X-Way because their motors are both from Hobbywing. Maybe there will be other sizes and other durometers in the future. Who knows? But still, the variety of wheels that you can put in the back can't compare with belt drive. The upside of hub motors is that it is really quiet and low maintenance. You don't have to deal with little pebbles getting into the belt. You don't have to deal with belts snapping. This board uses a 12S2P battery made up of 21700 cells. I don't know exactly which cell, I have to find out and I'll put it on the screen. But like I said earlier, the maximum output is 60 amps. I really did not experience any voltage sag. When the board was almost out of power, 
it still felt like it had full power. Although I wasn't exactly riding at full throttle, so maybe there is a bit of sag, but the way that I ride, I couldn't really experience it. This battery, as you can see, has LED lights on the side. Randy really wanted me to point that out. I personally don't care too much about the lights. If I were 14, maybe I would. I do understand why he implemented the lights. A lot of people customize their boards and put lights on their boards. So if you like having lights on your boards, well, you don't have to add lights because this board comes with them. I guess if you don't like the lights, you can just put a piece of electrical tape over the lights. You can probably also just open up the battery case and um, unplug the lights. Speaking of which, this battery case has another cover inside. So in theory, this case is more water resistant than before. I opened up the inner cover and it looks like there is a little bit of a gutter to collect water. I don't see a way for the water to exit, but it does look like it's more water resistant than the previous Backfire boards. This battery is swappable, you just gotta remove these six screws and then you can swap the battery. You swap the entire enclosure. You don't swap just the battery inside. You, you swap the whole thing. The torque is quite good, especially in turbo mode. Now, is it better than something like the X-Way X1 Pro? I'm not really sure. I would have to compare them side by side, but I'm pretty sure it has more torque than a boosted board. It's on par with something like X-Way X1 Pro, with or without Riot. The X1 Pro, even with hub motors, has a lot of torque. And this board, it feels like that to me, even with 96 millimeter wheels. In sport mode, it's still good. I mean, it's not like impressive good, but it's it's the mode that I would use most of the time. But when you want to go crazy, you go into turbo mode. According to Backfire, the top speed of this board is 46 kilometers per hour. The top speed that's stated by the manufacturer is usually accurate. Sometimes it might depend on your weight. So if you weigh more, the top speed might be a little bit less. On this board, I don't know if 46 kilometers per hour is a uh, arbitrary number that they set. But in any case, that's much faster than I personally would ride. For my own safety, I'm not going to try it out. I'm sorry. But if I want to go that fast, I would use a different type of vehicle. Now, I know some of you enjoy these high speeds, so... There you go, 46 kilometers per hour. The one area that I think could use the most improvement on this board is the brakes. The brakes felt a little bit soft to me. I mean, they're okay, but I've tried so many boards now that have great brakes. The brakes on this board just didn't feel all that great. If this is your first board, you're gonna feel like the brakes are nice and strong. But if you've tried many different boards, these brakes just feel a little bit sluggish. It might be because it's using 96 millimeter wheels. I have a feeling that if you put on 85 millimeter wheels, the brakes would probably feel much stronger. But with these default wheels, that come with the G3, the brakes were not very impressive. I wouldn't say that they're bad, they're just not great either. They're okay. This board is kind of heavy. When I weighed it, it's 8.5 kilograms. And I think the previous generation board, the G2T, was like 7.5 or something. So this board does feel heavier than the previous generation. If you're pulling it, it's not so bad. And this board is actually easier to pull than the previous generation because it's a little bit longer. With the G2T, I have to lean over a little bit to pull it without the tail sliding on the ground. But with this one, I can pretty much just stand up straight and pull it. I'm about six feet tall, five foot 11. Like I said earlier, when I talked about the battery, I think the water resistance of this board has been improved because of the additional cover inside the battery case. This is not really a waterproof board. I think you can still get water inside, especially considering this is a flexi deck. And these rubber pieces around the enclosures don't really do a whole lot to keep water out. So don't ride this board in the rain. I would just avoid wet areas in general just because it gets slippery. So basically more water resistant than before, but don't treat this as a waterproof board. No board is waterproof. This board looks pretty similar to the previous generation, the Backfire G2T. The battery case is quite a bit larger and there are now lights on the side. The overall style is still pretty much the same. It's still Backfire's signature style, but I don't have much to complain about it. It looks pretty cool. There is one major, major, major improvement though. This logo on the bottom side of the board, it is now a circle. On the Backfire G2, G2S, and G2T, it was an oval and that bugged the hell out of me. But now they finally fixed it. Now it's finally a perfect circle. <sighs> now I can sleep at night and you can too. Oh yeah, the logo on top is now silver instead of gold, which I think is a good thing. I didn't really like the gold design that much. I would prefer it to be black like on the Ranger, but I can live with silver. For the range, I got 26 kilometers with like virtually no voltage sag. The amount of watt hours I'll put on the screen 
But yeah, 26 kilometers, uh, I'm 70 kilograms. When I did the range test, the weather was like 27 degrees Celsius, I think. The way I was riding, most of the time I was between 35 kilometers per hour and like 20 kilometers per hour. I, I was going up and down. So your range could vary a lot. Range could depend on your weight, depends on traffic, depends how fast you're going, depends on the uh, incline, depends on the road surface, depends on the weather. Like seriously, a lot of things can affect the range. It hurts my feelings when someone says that I'm lying about range. I'm not. Okay, I'm not the most aggressive e-skater and I'm about 70 kilograms, which seems to be considered light for many people. So I'll probably get more range than many people, but I'm sure a lot of you are probably like me, like around 70 kilograms and you also don't ride at full speed all the time. Again, 70 kilograms, around 30 kilometers per hour. This is the range I got, 26 kilometers. I'm not lying, okay? This is just what I got. Range can vary. So final thoughts, really good board. It looks like they're gonna continue to sell the G2T and also the G2 Black. So those will be like the, uh, the budget boards. And this is more their premium board. Although this one doesn't get a T symbol because there's a more premium premium board which is the g3 plus this is like the slightly cheaper version but it's not like budget board price i do have a discount code by the way be sure to use it so i asked backfire how do they justify the higher price they told me it's basically a little bit of everything you know the deck is more expensive the trucks are a bit more expensive the batteries are more expensive they have a new custom case which costs money to produce the esc is a little bit more expensive everything's a little bit more expensive so you add all of that up together and if you have a board that's more expensive than the G2T. So how does this compare to other boards around the same price? I'll save that for another video, but the other boards that are around this price are all belt drive boards. So if you prefer hub motors, here's your hub motor option. I'll just say right now that a lot of people have this impression that belt drive always has more torque than hub motors. This is not the case. This board accelerates just as quickly as its main belt drive competitors. One board might be a little bit quicker than the other, but just based on feeling, they're probably very close. Hopefully I'll have time to do a comparison one day but to me they're so close that you shouldn't choose one over the other because of torque. If you're gonna choose one over the other it's probably gonna be based on drive system. Do you prefer belt drive or do you prefer hub motors? And for a hub motor board like I said earlier it rides like a belt drive board because of the big wheels because of the relatively thick urethane for a hub motor board. The flexi deck the thick what do you call those uh, not risers shock pads also add the fact that the deck is a little bit bigger so all of that added together makes this a really comfortable right so those are my thoughts if you have any questions go ahead and leave a comment that's disgusting